Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A3 from Putnam 2022. So here's what the problem says. Let P be a prime greater than 5. F of P denotes the number of infinite sequences A1, A2, A3 and so on such that AN is somewhere between 1 and P minus 1 and AN times AN plus 2 is 1 plus AN plus 1 times uh, mod P uh, for all n greater than or equal to 1. Then they ask us to prove that f of p is either 0 or 2 mod p. Okay, so the first thing that I think about this problem when I look at it is that since they're asking us to show f of p is either 0 or 2 mod p, one possible uh, solution would be to take all of the sequences that satisfy this condition, put them in groups of 5, and then show that somehow show that there's going to be either no leftover or there are going to be two left over. So that's one strategy that comes to my mind. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. The second thing, looking at this, the recursion, is that a n plus 2, since a n isn't 0, I can actually evaluate a n plus 2. That becomes 1 plus a n plus 1 over a n. Now, notice that everything here is going to be mod p, including a n's. So let's just write down everything in fp so let's look at just fp and let's just um, consider this just a, a regular division so this would be my strategy um, okay so let's let's do that now um, a couple of different uh, ways of thinking about this problem one thing that comes to my mind is um, what I just mentioned, which is trying to put these solutions into groups of five, and then there's going to be a leftover of either zero or two. The other thing is, it's also possible, not very likely, that we can actually find a formula for f of p, and then we can take it mod p. Doesn't seem very likely. Usually these kinds of problems is not going to be that way. You have to use the first strategy. But how do we, in fact, study? So whatever we want to do, we have to study this sequence. How do we study this sequence? Um, one way of doing that would be to find the first few terms and then see if there's a pattern. Another approach would be to take a special case, p equals something. Let's say the smallest value is 7. Find the sequences and then count them, see how many there are, and then maybe you can find a way to... Um, find f of p or use this uh, in initial strategy, strategy that I mentioned. So um, if we look at the uh, condition that they gave us, we know that a n isn't 0. So that means 1 plus a n plus 1 is also not 0, which means a n plus 1 cannot be negative 1. If I were to um, take the sequences for p equals 7, then a1 cannot be 0, and a2, based on what we just saw, cannot be 0 or negative 1. So there are 6 possibilities for this one, and there are 5 possibilities for this one. So there's going to be 30 possibilities. So you can list all of these 30 possibilities and then see which one works and which one doesn't. The goal is to make sure that none of the terms in the sequence are divisible by p. That's the goal. Um, and that would be a bit time consuming since, there, since there's going to be 30 different possibilities. So I'm going to hold on to that idea. Instead, I'm going to first find the first few terms and see what we get. And if I don't get anywhere, then we can work something out, hopefully. Um, one other thing that I notice before I actually start writing down the sequence is that since there are only finitely many terms, um, finitely many possibilities for every term, there is going to be p minus 1 possibilities for every term, and in fact p minus 2 possibilities for every term, because terms cannot be 0 or negative 1 starting from the second term. Um, there's going to be some, uh, the, the sequence is going to be periodic. Because if you look at the pairs a1, a2, a2, a3, etc., mod p, there are only finitely many possibilities. 
So there's going to be a repetition. And once there's a repetition, let's say A1, A2, and A7, A8 are the same. If that's the case, then it becomes periodic. So we, we know that there's going to be some in some ways there's going to be a repetition. So let's actually find out if we can find this uh, cycle, if we can find the period of this sequence. So let's write down the first few terms and see what we get. So we know A3 is 1 plus A2 over A1. So that's just the recursion. Um, A4 would be 1 plus A3 over A2. Let's write it down. 1 plus a3 is 1 plus a2 over a1 over a2. And this is 1 plus a1 plus a2 over a1 times a2. a5 would be 1 plus a4 over a3. 1 plus a4 would be 1 plus a1 plus a2 plus a1 a2 over a1 a2 that's 1 plus a4 divided by a3 which is 1 plus a2 over a1 okay 1 plus a2 plus a plus a1 plus a2 over a, a plus a1 a2 the numerator is going to be 1 plus a1 times 1 plus a2 and then divided by a1 a2 multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator and A1 cancels, 1 plus A2 cancels, so we get 1 plus A1 over A2. So that's A5. A6 would be 1 plus, uh, 1 plus A1 over A2, 1 plus A5, over A4, which is 1 plus A1 plus A2 over A1, A2. So taking the common denominators, rewriting it, you get 1 plus A1 plus A2 divided by A2 multiplied by A1, A2 over 1 plus A1 plus A2. And A1 plus A1 plus A2 cancels, A2 cancels, so we get A1. So that's really nice because we got uh, the first term. But we need two terms to repeat. If the next term is also A2, then we are basically uh, very close to a solution. So that would be 1 plus a6, which is a1, divided by a5, which is 1 plus a1, over a2. Perfect. So that's exactly a2. Okay, so we know there's going to be a repetition. Now we'll have to figure out um, how many possibilities there are for a1, how many possibilities there are for a2, and then we go from there. So now we're going to write down the solution. So we now write down the solution. So we claim f of p equals, okay, so I don't know still what the uh, number of solutions are, but we're going to figure it out. We, we see that this is going to be possible. Okay, um, we see that a n plus 2 is equal to 1 plus a n plus 1 over a n. Uh, where we are working in FP, the field of integers uh, modulo P. Okay, so that means A3 would be, so I have to just write down essentially what I just uh, did. So maybe I will copy down this work that I have here because I have already done the work here. So I just copied this from what we had done before. So this is just a repetition of this. And then thus the sequence is periodic since a6 equals a1 and a7 equals a2. So what we need to do is we need to make sure the first five terms, because they repeat, so the only things that we need to check are the first five terms. The first five 
terms are non-zero. Okay, so let's do that. A1 isn't zero. A2 isn't zero. So those are just given. A3 being non-zero means, if you look at A3, A3 was 1 plus A2 over A1. So that means 1 plus A2 cannot be zero, which means A2 is not going to be negative 1. A4 not being zero implies, if you look at A4, it's 1 plus A1 plus A2 over A1, A2. So 1 plus A1 plus A2 cannot be zero, which means a2 cannot be negative 1 minus a1. a5 also cannot be 0 and that's the last thing we need. And if we look at a5, we have it is 1 plus a1 over a2. So 1 plus a1 cannot be 0, which means a1 cannot be negative 1. So this means to summarize, we need this. We need a1 to be everything except for 0 and negative 1 and a2 to be everything except for 0, negative 1, minus 1, minus a1. So that means there are p minus 2 possible values for a1. So there are uh, p minus 2 values for a1 that are possible. If you look at a2, there are three possibilities that need to be excluded. However, maybe this one is the same as one of these. So I'll have to make sure these three are, in fact, distinct. So note that negative 1 minus a1 equals 0 implies a1 is negative 1 and negative 1 minus a1 being negative 1 implies a1 is 0. Thus, um, we, if a1 isn't 0 or negative 1, then 0, negative 1, and negative 1 minus a1 are distinct. This implies there are p minus 3 possible values for a2. So there are p minus 2 possible values for a1 and p minus, two, uh, p minus uh, 3 possible values for a2. And that's exactly what we wanted. So f of p becomes p minus 2 times p minus 3. So this is really nice because we actually found a, a formula for f of p. In the beginning, as I said, it was not very likely that we could find a formula for f of p because usually these types of problems, Putnam problems especially, you're not really going to be able to find a formula. You just have to put the things in groups of uh, five. Um, so that was um, a bit at, at least unexpected. So now we are not quite done because they asked us to show that this is, zero, uh, this is 0 or 2 mod 5. But that part is pretty easy. Since p greater than 5 is prime, p would be mod 5, would be either plus minus 1 or plus minus 2. If p is plus minus 1 mod 5, then f of p would be, so you just plug in 1, you get negative 1 times negative 2. Or plug in negative 1, you get negative 3 times negative 4. And both of these are 2 mod 5. If P is plus or minus 2 mod 5, then F of P mod 5 would be, if you plug in 2, you get 0 times negative 1. Or plug in negative 2, you get negative 4 times negative 5, which is 0 mod 5. And that completes the proof. So if you would like more videos on Putnam problems and competition problems, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.